from Ricky Slicks. Uh, JC Treader to Miami. Will keeps talking about JC to Miami. Yeah, I know he does. Uh, makes sense. Treader's in a weird spot where he should have been signed already. And in years past, when we've seen older offensive linemen remain unsigned, they often don't get signed. Remember Russell Okun, starter, unsigned still. It's weird, right? I think there are some injury concerns, and I think him being the NFL union head for the players is not helping his cases. With that said, six teams should go sign him. The Dolphins, Minnesota, Dallas, Las Vegas, New York Giants, and Seattle. He is an upgraded center over all of those teams' current options. Miami, in particular, should sign J.C. Treader. I unfortunately am unconvinced he's going to, even though he should sign with an NFL team. He's still a good player. Do you think he will end up signing that J.C. Treader? that is? Type in Y for yes or type in N for no. From Rodney Peter, could the Dolphins cut their losses and trade Austin Jackson or Liam Eikenberg? Good question. Um, Maybe. The Dolphins' overhaul of the offensive line has been super impressive, and all that's missing is maybe just J.C. Treader uh, at that center spot. Teron Armstead, Connor Williams... And hopefully not Connor Williams at center. Fixes your left side of the offensive line. Robert Hunt is one starter at guard. I think they'll let guys like Eichenberg and Jackson compete at right tackle. The issue is they were they were bad last year. Now, the offense was pretty mediocre overall for, for, the, for Miami last year. And I think Jackson's a great fit for what they want to do on offense under Mike McDaniel. And a bad offensive line means everyone plays bad, but... This, these numbers are, they're, to, to paraphrase a once great high school QB, they're ass, my dude. They're not good. Nine sacks, 40-plus hurries allowed by both players, bad run grades from PFF. Neither player had a good season, but they were early round picks, which means somebody could show interest in a trade. Six teams that are in the market more notably for potential right tackle or left tackle help, which both guys have played right and left tackle in the NFL. The Falcons, because Caleb McGarry stinks. The Bears, left tackle. Denver, right tackle. The Raiders, I guess right tackle. It's Alex Lover, I, think it's, I guess it's going to be a guard for them. Get Storm Norton off the field charges, I beg of you. And the Steelers, maybe a, a competitor for Dan Moore. To be honest, it kind of looks like Austin Jackson's a bust. At least so far, but he's young. That could change. And I mentioned guys like Caleb McGarry, probably also a bust. I want you guys to be a hater for me in the comments section. Name a draft bust recently taken by your favorite NFL team. From Nye Galaxy, where do you think the Dolphins will end up in the AFC? It's a great question because the AFC is loaded this year. Um... I think behind the Bills for sure, pick two of the AFC North teams, Bengals, Ravens, and Browns, they'll be behind. AFC South, probably behind the Titans or the Colts. AFC West, God, that might be, they might be the fifth best team in that if they played five teams in there. So top half and in a very tightly contested race to make the postseason, that team is built pretty well. They need two to take a significant step forward this year. From Wonder Bengal, who is wondering about the Bengals. Uh, are the Bengals going to have to trade away Jesse Bates? Maybe. We are in what, what, what I call the contract negotiation stage, where Bates has leaked to USA Today that he has no intention of playing under the franchise tag, and he wants a long-term deal right now. Now, Bates has not signed his franchise tag tender, meaning he is able to not be fined. He can skip minicamp, OTAs, all the mandatory camp stuff and not be fined unlike players under contract. So that makes it more plausible he does not show up when things get going later on in June and July for Cincinnati. The Bengals took Daxton Hill in round one. That's a potential heir apparent. So a trade is possible, although Bengals are trying to win games right now. Some teams to watch for here. Philadelphia... I, I, that makes a lot of sense to me. Miami, under the radar destination. I, I, I like Brandon Jones, but Javon Holland and Jesse Bates, that's a dynamic pairing right there. The Rams, 
they could use an impact safety in the mold of a, of a, of a high-end impact player, and they've got the picks and money to say F it. The Commanders and Jets are under the radar fits there. I think Bates in New York would actually be awesome for the Robert Sala defense. That's a big upgrade over Ashton Davis and LaMarcus Joyner at safety. So what do you think in the end the Bengals will end up doing with Jesse Bates? Type T for they're going to trade him. Type P for no, no, no. They'll pay him, get a long-term deal done before week one of the season. Or W for, you know what? They're going to wait, and they're going to call Bates' bluff and get him to show up and play on the franchise tag this year. From Adam Page, should Miami call the Steelers and see if the Steelers can trade Devin Bush for two firsts and Miles Gaskin? Uh, first off, there is not a planet or multiverse in which Devin Bush right now is worth two first-round picks. Devin Bush was bad last year. So if you want him, I think you would be able to find a way to make that deal happen. But he's not worth two first-round picks. From Alec G., which NFL team will be expected to make the playoffs and miss and vice versa? So about every year before they added the extra wild card spot, about four teams who made it last year didn't make it the next season. The ones that jump out to me, well, Pittsburgh's pretty obvious, I think, from that standpoint. Patriots as well. I think the Chargers will be able to make it. And now if you're talking about this year and the expectations of making it, I could see a team like Arizona kind of collapsing a little bit this year, like they've done in the past when they don't have their best playoff stuff. The surprise team, and I don't know if they're there yet, but the shocking team could be someone like the Jets. They take a massive step forward and wow everybody. I think it'd be more likely a surprise NFC team ends up emerging the Saints might count in that category, but I feel like people think they're good enough still. It's a great question, Al, because we might do a full video on that in the future. From 30 Racks, who's your early offensive and defensive player of the year? Okay, let me go with, uh, I'm going to go <sighs> Drake London for the Atlanta Falcons because it's him and Kyle Pitts. Catching passes. Oh, I, I, I read that as rookie of the year. Sorry. Jeff's face is like, oh my, what are you talking about? Offensive and defensive. Okay, not rookies. My bad. Uh, offensive player of the year. It's not going to go back. Josh Allen. Give me Josh Allen. Runner up, Justin Herbert. Defensive player of the year. Let's go back to the Aaron Donald well, who will once again win that award. And maybe a guy like Micah Parsons makes a good run at it as well. Now we have daily NFL shows and NBA coverage as well here at chat sports if you want that all for free it's pretty easy to get all you have to do is hit that big red button and subscribe for free nfl videos and nba and even some college football stuff here as well youtube.com slash chat sports tv from smoky mckenzie who said he recently subbed thank you smoky most overrated team and most underrated nfl team probably a a, a show will do well, a video we'll, we'll do an entire thing on, just overrated, underrated teams. Overrated teams right now? Hmm. A little bit worried about Tennessee, by the way, and Green Bay. I'm uh, Now, the NFC side from Green Bay, they'll win the division, no problems there. I'm worried about them. Underrated teams that I see out there? Hmm. Ravens. They went 9-8 and eight because of injuries last year. I think the Ravens are going to be a very real playoff threat this year. And I think, frankly, I think Pittsburgh and the Raiders are a bit overrated as well. Tom, look into your crystal ball. Who wins the Super Bowl? Mm. Not going to go Brady. Give me the Bills. Give me Josh Allen, Buffalo, Bills Mafia gets a Super Bowl ring for the first time. That'd be pretty fun on that standpoint. If you're watching on demand as opposed to live, you might be like, well, shucks, Tom. I can't get my questions answered on the mailbag. I'm not able to watch live. Good news. YouTube is trying to help you out here. They have added super thanks, and this allows you to donate outside of live videos. Before this, you could only super chat on live, nothing on demand to donate. What you do is click the little thanks icon, that third row. It's the heart with the dollar sign in the middle. You can pick your amount and edit your message so that if you're watching this, 
you know, instead of, instead of on Wednesdays live, on a Friday or a Saturday or a Sunday or whatever, you can still donate. We'll get a notification. We can add it to a future show for you. We appreciate your support here at Chat Sports. It's possible thanks to you guys. Any super thanks, even if there's no question, we'll get you a shout out on a future show. From KD, guess for comeback player of the year. Um, I'm going to go with Derrick Henry. I think that's a pretty safe bet from that standpoint. Jameis Winston will be in the conversation as well. Deshaun Watson should be. I wonder if the voters will say no, no matter what, to Deshaun. Uh, beyond that, Christian McCaffrey is a good is a good is probably an under the maybe a bit more under the radar than you expect. That looking at the odds here, he's not he's tied for fifth. And I'll throw Michael Thomas in that conversation as well. Super chat again from Taylor Holland. NFL underdog for AFC and NFC Rookie of the Year, Alec Pierce, on both sides of the ball. Okay, so there's a, a long, in-depth question here. Uh, we'll, we'll throw in AFC underdog for Rookie of the Year for Alec Pierce. That's fine with me. Uh, beyond that, and oh, I guess i got to do defense too. That's fine. Uh, NFC underdog for Rookie of the Year. How about Kenneth Walker? How about the Seahawks who want to run the football a lot? He gets that award over, I think, the betting favorite right now in Drake London. We can roll with Alec Pierce for AFC. For NFC Rookie of the Year and Defensive Rookie of the Year, I mean, Thibodeau is, I think, pretty clearly your betting favorite from that standpoint, so I don't want to go too far on that. On that, Or maybe, maybe Hutchinson is your betting favorite, actually, now that I think about it more. So I'm not going to go Thibodeau. I just want to make sure I'm not. I want to go beyond the normal route there. Stingley's too obvious. Is Kyle, is Kyle Hamilton cheating, Jeremy? Is that cheating for me? Because that, 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 that's my guy. That's cheating? Okay, I got to go deeper. I got to go deeper. Okay, Trent McDuffie in the AFC, because I'm a big fan of his game. In the NFC mm, defense, how about Andrew Booth of the Vikings? I think Booth could play a big-time role for Minnesota. From FCX, Will Anderson or Jalen Carter? So this is... Bama edge rusher Will Anderson and Georgia defense lineman Jalen Carter, as we sit in the way too early process, two of the best players in next year's draft class. No wrong answer. Carter's going to be a stud. So is Anderson. But had both guys been draft eligible, I think Anderson would have been the first player taken in this year's class. And Carter might have been number two, to be honest. Anderson is a stud. I think he is the best player in all of college football. I thought he was that last year as well. 